Hey guys, welcome back to our page. Today we just want to go over a few quick range of motion measurements of the elbow and the forearm. And just remember that this is the second out of a series of goniometry videos. We'll re be releasing more videos in the future, so go check our channel out for the goniometry videos and a lot of other content that might be helpful to you in your practice. Alright, so first we're going to start out with elbow flexion and extension. We'll start out with extension. So first you want to find uh, where your axis is going to be. In this case it's going to be right on the lateral epicondyle. I'm going to put the axis there. Your stationary arm is going to go up through the midline of the humerus or the upper arm and your movable arm is going to go down the midline of the forearm. So you'll ask the patient to straighten or extend their elbow as far as they comfortably can. You see he can get to zero. A lot of your patients are not going to be able to get to that point. So let's say he got to around 20 actively by himself. Next, if you want to do a passive measurement, uh, make sure your axis is still in the, in the correct spot. Um, I kind of trapped that goniometer in between his forearm and my hand so that it moves as his elbow moves. And then you're going to pull uh, to get that passive measurement as far as he can comfortably stand it. So one thing you want to watch out for when you're having somebody um, or when you're measuring somebody in extension, a lot of times their shoulder will kick forward and that's going to kind of skew your measurements some. So you just have to do the best you can. Sometimes you even need some help, somebody, to, another therapist or somebody to kind of hold that shoulder in place to get a very accurate measurement. So for elbow flexion, a little easier to measure. Um, you're putting the axis in the same spot, stationary arm, movable arm, all that's in the exact same spot as it was for extension. You'll ask the patient to um, bend or flex their arm. Sometimes I just say, hey, can you try to touch your shoulder with your hand? So it gives them a cue. And it's got about 130 or so, which is, which is normal for elbow flexion. Same thing for passive. I just kind of trap it, that goniometer in between his forearm and my hand, and I push until he can't go anymore or until I feel like it needs to stop. Alright guys, so next we're going to work on measuring forearm pronation and supination. So you can have the patient either standing or seated, usually seated, just gives a little more stabilization. I'm going to start with their elbow by their side. Their elbow flexed approximately 90 degrees, just that neutral position, and they can start at a neutral forearm position if they can attain that measurement. Um, and then we're going to measure forearm pronation first. So what we'll do is maybe passively first take them just to kind of get an idea of what the range is passively there. And then we'll place the goniometer and measure their active motion. So what you want to do here is put the stationary arm perpendicular to the floor. And then you want to have the movable arm lying on the dorsum of the wrist for pronation. Just flush against the wrist and it's going to actually follow the dorsum of the wrist as they go into pronation. The axis should follow the axis of movement. So if you look at it as just a functional movement, as they go into pronation, you'll be able to see where the axis spins at. So he's going to go, I'm going to ask the patient, go ahead and turn palm down as far as you can. And as you can see, stationary arm is perpendicular to the floor. This movable arm is flush against the dorsum of the wrist, and I can get my measurement there. And for forearm supination, we're going to start again in that neutral position. I'm going to move to the other side of the forearm. The stationary arm, again, is going to be perpendicular to the floor and then the movable arm is going to be uh, flush against the volar aspect of the wrist. I'm gonna have them go ahead. You could take them passively first again just to see what the range would be and then have them move actively into supination or palm up position, however you wanna word that to them. Stationary arm perpendicular to the floor, movable arm flush against the volar aspect of the wrist and there's your measurement. And make sure when they're moving into supination that they don't come forward with their elbow because then you can get some shoulder uh, involvement and if there's shoulder motion there again that will skew your measurement you won't get a true reading for forearm supination. Hey guys thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel the upper hand is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.